welcome to Tech News Briefing. It's Friday, August 18th. I'm Zoe Thomas for The Wall Street Journal. If you walk around San Francisco, you'll see a lot of self-driving cars being tested. And recently, our reporters Megan Bobarowski and Miles Krupa took trips with the two biggest self-driving companies in the city. That's Cruise, majority owned by General Motors, and Waymo, owned by Google parent Alphabet. And Miles is with me now to talk about those rides. So, Miles, just for folks who haven't been to San Francisco recently, how ubiquitous are these self-driving taxis? I would say they're ubiquitous enough to where most of the time, if you're taking a ride through the city, you'll probably encounter at least one or two. They're more common in areas sort of outside of the downtown, especially at night. So, you know, you even have tourists who are coming to San Francisco because you can potentially have the chance to ride one of these cars. Okay, so for San Francisco residents or for tourists who want to come and ride in it, how do they get into one of these self-driving vehicles? There's still a wait list for the apps. They give easy access to journalists because they want journalists to see it for themselves. But for most people, you have to wait in line. Well, Miles, you did get to take a ride in these cars with our colleague Megan Bobarowski. What was that like? It's a little alarming at first (laughs) to see a car that's come up to the curb just for you and to not have a driver in it. So take us through that. I mean, what was it like ordering it? Where did you go? Megan and I spent one night trying out both services side by side. So we started at Megan's apartment in the Mission District, which is a very popular neighborhood, big neighborhood in San Francisco. So we close the door. It shows our destination on a little console in the center. I like the music in here. Uh, It's very spacey. Okay. And then start ride. Hello from Waymo. As we get going... Rode it across town to this neighborhood called the Richmond. It was about a 20 minute ride, although maybe a little bit longer. One thing about the cars is that they drive at the speed limits or below. They often take routes that are less populated by other cars. So it's longer than your typical Lyft or Uber ride. So this car that we're in immediately turned down a side street almost. Um, I am curious about this route. Oh, it's gonna turn left, okay. Okay, so perhaps it will start going in the correct direction soon. And then came back in a cruise. Okay, start ride. Let's cruise. Okay, so we're driving down a hill. Pretty smooth so far. I think it feels like, you know, pretty yeah. pretty safe. I don't feel yeah. like I'm worried for my life right now. I do feel like this isn't much of a driving challenge. And how did the two compare? They're very similar. Both obey all traffic laws (laughs) as best as they can, probably better than most human drivers do. But there's also sort of this uncanny valley feeling that they don't really drive like a human, Mm -hmm. for better or worse. That's a bit of a slow left turn. That was an unprotected left turn. (laughs) If I I was a human driver, I'd be quite concerned. (laughs) But, you know, I'd be like, what are you doing, buddy? And so they're sensing everything around them at all times. And so sometimes we noticed... It would just jerk a little bit. Oh my gosh, what's that? Like, you got close to that, is that a Prius? It was coming to a stop at a stoplight and it kind of did like a right and then a left and then a right, you know, with the steering wheel. Yeah. Um, And I don't know why it did that. And it's like, what made it jerk right then? You know, maybe there was something in front of it on the road, something we couldn't see. Is it the same experience as a passenger? You know, you get in, you buckle up your seatbelt, you sit in the back seat until it gets to your destination. Is there anything different? There's nothing different, really. Sometimes a sort of customer service rep will come on over the audio system and just say, hey, how's everything going? You know, let me know if you have any questions. So there is a way to interact with the human. It's just the human's not there in the car. And cost comparison between, say, Cruise and Waymo and maybe a traditional taxi or an Uber or Lyft? Right now is that it's maybe 80%, 60% of what an Uber or Lyft would cost. They're keeping the prices low right now just to sort of encourage people to try it out. The self-driving car companies Cruise and Waymo recently won regulatory approval to expand their taxi service in San Francisco. So Miles, catch us up on this news. What kind of expansion approval did they get? Yeah, so... The gist of it is that both companies are now allowed to charge for 
rides all across the city at all hours of the day. So just like you would call an Uber or a Lyft and you would pay them $15 to get from one neighborhood to another, you will now be able to do that with Cruz and Waymo under these new permits they've received. So Cruz, majority owned by GM and Waymo owned by Alphabet, both of these companies are trying to become profitable autonomous taxi businesses. How big a deal is this San Francisco approval? It's huge. So GM has come out and said that it expects tens of billions of dollars of revenue from Cruise by the end of the decade. Alphabet hasn't come out with any similar projections, but it's already put in billions of dollars into Waymo. It's brought in outside investors, private equity firms like Silver Lake. So there are a lot of big financial players that have an interest in this going well. And it's also an interesting time for the companies because with the economic uncertainty, layoffs at the tech companies, a general sort of mood of retrenchment, it's unclear just how willing people will be to keep putting money into these still very loss-making businesses. So they're feeling a little bit more pressure now more than ever to really turn this into a commercial business. So let's talk about some of the challenges then to turning that into a commercial business. We heard about yours and Megan's rides in Cruise and Waymo, but how are other residents in San Francisco reacting to these cars? It's sort of all over the map. Generally, once people ride in one of the cars, their concerns about personal safety tend to go away. However, there's still very spirited debates going on about when these cars are operating at scale, when they're getting closer to the same volume as Lyft and Uber, whether that changes the nature of our roads, whether that changes the nature of transportation. Have there been any incidents that have raised concerns among passengers or pedestrians? Yeah, there have been a few viral incidents, for lack of a better word. A Waymo hit and killed a dog that jumped out from behind a parked car. Waymo has said the accident was unavoidable, but that definitely drew attention. Cruise in particular has caught flack for stopping in the middle of intersections when the car feels like it's in danger. Uh, and then it takes minutes, at least, for somebody from Cruise to come out and retrieve it and help it get back on track. Cruise would say that's just part of the safety measures, and they are pretty fast at getting the cars back on track. I wonder, though, if they're having these kinds of problems in San Francisco, if they're facing this kind of criticism in a place that's used to having new tech, what does that mean for their expansion plans? Yeah, it really is in many ways a testing ground for political battles these companies are going to fight everywhere in the country. San Francisco is also particular. It's like full of all these tech employees who are early adopters of everything, but it's also home to a lot of people who are very protective of their city, the city's local character. They are very protective of public transportation, which has been going through funding difficulties, and above all are interested in making sure that these companies present a really ironclad case for expanding, that we know everything there is to know about their safety record, that we have confidence in that before we move forward. And so there's certainly a sort of politically active strain in San Francisco is providing the strongest pushback to these companies. These aren't the only two self-driving companies, though. What are we seeing from others who are trying to grow in San Francisco or elsewhere? Yeah, certainly the other big player to mention is a company called Zooks that's owned by Amazon. And like Cruise, they are trying to build their own custom car that's purpose-built for being a self-driving robo-taxi. So it's more like a box. The seats face each other and there isn't really like a traditional driver seat kind of arrangement. And they're currently testing those cars around the Amazon headquarters, but they're not using those in San Francisco yet. They're instead testing their general self-driving software using these Toyota Highlanders in the city. All right. That's our reporter, Miles Krupa. Thanks for joining us for this, Miles. Thanks, Zoe. All right, that's it for Tech News Briefing. Today's show was produced by Julie Chang. 
I'm your host, Zoe Thomas. We had additional support this week from Jayla Everett. Our supervising producer is Melanie Roy. Aisha Al Muslim is our development producer. Scott Salloway and Chris Sinsley are our deputy editors. And Falana Patterson is the Wall Street Journal's head of news audio. We'll be back with a new show on Monday. Thanks for listening.